Hi, this is Jennifer Gonzalez for Cult of Pedagogy. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to organize your time with Google Calendar. Google Calendar is a really good system for organizing all of your daily appointments and tasks and uh, just your schedule in general. I tried to use a paper planner for years and I found that I had a lot of trouble um, remembering to write things down, finding them later, and also moving and changing events and reprioritizing. And I found that Google Calendar is a really, really great way to um, keep everything organized. So the first thing you need to do in order to set up your calendar is you have to know how to find it in the first place. So in order to use Google Calendar, you have to have a Google account. So if you just go to google.com, right now I have an account I'm clicking up here, but there's an option to add an account. So I imagine if I didn't have one, there would be a spot there for adding an account. So once you have an account, you just go to google.com and you're going to see all these little icons up here. This one is the apps icon. Click on that and you've got all the different um, accounts and types of things now that are associated with your Gmail account. One of them is calendar. So I click on that. So if you look at this right now, all that's there is Labor Day. Uh, in the U.S. version of the, the Google Calendar, they automatically put in holidays in the United States. And I'll show you how to turn that on and off later if you wanted to. So right now this is blank. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a new calendar. Now if you look along here, I actually have a few separate calendars and I'm going to explain how those work in a minute, but I'll show you if you're starting brand new, you're going to need to create a new one. So I'm going to click right there, create new calendar. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to assume that I am a yearbook advisor at a school because that way we can create a calendar called yearbook. For right now, I'm going to kind of ignore all these other settings and I'm just going to click create calendar. Okay, so now if you look over here, a new one has appeared, yearbook. Now it's got a color associated with it right now. I'm going to choose a different color. You can color code your calendars, which is really nice. I am going to make this one yellow. Next, I'm going to show you how to add an event to your calendar. I'm going to add in a meeting. And let's say my yearbook uh, staff meets every Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. So I clicked on there right now. Now, because I have a bunch of other calendars here, it automatically goes to my, my main calendar for me, which is Jennifer Gonzalez. I'm going to switch that to the yearbook calendar, and I'm going to write meeting. Now, since this meeting is every week, I am going to add some more information to that. So I'm going to edit the event. Now, notice right now it's got me from 3 to 4 p.m. I'm going to just change that to 5 p.m., and I'm going to click repeat. You can do events that are a one-time event or you can do repeated ones and you can repeat them once a year, once a week, once a month. So let's suppose this is going to be a weekly event, but I have lots of other options. You can get really specific every one week, but if you were doing something every two weeks or whatever, I mean, you could have it repeat in whatever schedule you want every Thursday. Instead of having it end never, let's say I'm doing this in September and we're going to be meeting until, you know, mid-March. So I'll just go ahead and say after 20 occurrences, I'd have to look at my um, actual calendar to decide exactly when I wanted it to end. But after they've put it on my calendar for 20 weeks in a row, they're going to stop putting it there. So, okay, I'll click save. And now it's there on my calendar. Now if I look at the next week, it's there too. At 3 to 5, the next week, it's there too. It's going to keep turning up every week um, until I tell it to stop or until that 20 weeks is over. Now suppose one week I just wanted to cancel it. I go into here, I click delete, and then it would ask me, do I want to only delete this one instance or do I want to delete all events in the series, um, everything following this one. So this is really good for a recurring event. You don't have to delete all of them. If you're just going to be skipping one meeting or canceling one meeting, you can do that. Now suppose I wanted to make, make the meeting longer on this day. I click on it and I can actually, if I hold down my mouse, I can actually drag it and make it longer. And I can also tell them whether it's going to be this event or all other events, okay? I'm going to cancel the change for right now. I could also, let me put another event on my yearbook calendar. I'm going to say that I, maybe I want my sports section to be due this week, which as anybody who does yearbook knows, having a sports section due in September would be ridiculous, but that's okay. Let's say I want the sports section to be due on Tuesday, okay? Now, it's just due that day. It's not necessarily due at any particular time. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on 10 a.m. Okay, I'm going to say sports section due. Change it to the yearbook calendar. And I'm going to edit the event because this is not from 10 to 11. I want this to be an all-day event. And by all-day, I just mean it doesn't have a specific time. 
So let's save that. Now notice that appears along the top. Labor Day, you notice, appears along the top too. That's for just events that just mean this is today. This, this, day hap this thing happens on this day. It's not assigned to a specific time. So both of these things are color coded as yellow. Now this one is kind of outlined in yellow, but it's not really a solid yellow. Let's put one more event on the yearbook calendar. Let's say I have to meet with a vendor. Meet with vendor. And that's going to be just a one-time event. So I'll create the event. So I've got a couple of events just this week. Now if I click over here on yearbook, just click on it one time, they're all going to disappear. If I click on holidays in the United States, that'll disappear. And notice that this little square here turns empty. To make them all appear, you click on them and they can all appear. This is really nice if you have a lot of things going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on my personal calendar. This is far in the future, so I don't have a lot, but I do have a gym class that I like to go to. Um, and so that'll appear here. I've also got my schedule for my blog, Cult of Pedagogy, and I schedule out all of my posts. So suppose I wanted to add a, a new post. I'll just write new post. I make sure that I put it on the Cult of Pedagogy calendar, and that's going to be colored with that color. Now notice I clicked along the top to add that. That's another way of adding an all-day task. Now you probably have noticed this is also called milestones. I'm going to click on that. That is for birthdays or anniversaries or uh, that's just what I called it milestones but you can have a separate calendar that just has people's birthdays or special events or something like that. Basically this is how it works. You add events. You can have them repeat. You can have them color coded to different different calendars. Let me go ahead and add another event to the Cult of Pedagogy. Let's say I have a Skype call with somebody and this is something I'm doing for my website. Let me add that and that's from 12 to 1. Now let's say it, it gets canceled or postponed. We can't do it. I can just click on this and drag it and I can move it to another day. Now if the schedule starts to get really full and I only want to look at things for my website and nothing else, I can kind of hide the yearbook stuff. I can hide my personal stuff so that I'm only looking at things for the website. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to add a task. Let's suppose you just want to keep your to-do list on here. This isn't something that's assigned to a specific day necessarily. This is just something you want to make sure that you get to. Let's say I want to drop off some clothes at Goodwill. I can add, I can actually click anywhere, but let's say I'm going to do that on Thursday. I'm going to click here. Okay, I will write Goodwill drop. Now, right now, it's chosen to be an event. If I click on task, that's going to become a task instead. And it doesn't ask me for a day or a time or anything like that because this is just an item for my to-do list. I click create task and that is just going to appear on that day. It's also going to appear over here. I think I've got that woken up over there and I don't necessarily have to have that, but I can look at that. Right now, tasks are hidden. If I click on that, it appears here and over here. If I don't get to this on this day, I can move it the same way that I would move a an event. I just click on it, drag it, I can move it over there. Now there are a lot of other views that you can also um, use to look at your calendar. You can look at a full week like I am now. You can look at a month, which kind of keeps things so that they're not so much colored like they are. You can look at four days at a time. This is kind of a, a nice view for, you know, when you're right in the middle of your week and you just want to see what's up ahead. You can look at just the day. And you can also look at things as an agenda, which kind of puts it just as a list instead. So everybody's going to have their own preference. I've kind of gotten used to this week view. Here is another fantastic feature. Suppose I uh, want to make sure I remember my dad's birthday. Let's go into this. Just put edit event. And I can actually send myself an email reminder because uh, Gmail is connected to your Google Calendar. So they can actually send you a reminder through your, um, through your Gmail. So right down here, it says notifications. I'm going to add a notification. And you can basically choose whether you want a pop-up when you're in the Gmail environment or to have them send you an email. So I can actually have them send me an email. And if it's my dad's birthday, I'd rather it be about like seven days before. Click Save. And then it's going to ask if I want only this event to give me a reminder or all events. So I can just have a, an email reminder sent to me every, every year. Uh, I can also invite other people. Let's suppose I'm going to be uh, having a dinner on a Friday night and it's going to be at 7 p.m. and maybe it's going to be a, let's just write dinner party. And I'll put this in my own sort of personal calendar. I'm going to edit the event and I am going to make it nice and late. 
and I can also add guests. I can enter email addresses for anybody that I want to invite through here, add them, and they'll get an email invitation basically to this event, and then I'll get a notification of whether or not they've accepted it or not. If they also have Google Calendar, that'll be added to their Google Calendar, and if I make changes to it, it'll... Um, it'll make changes on their calendar too. If I wanted to share, let's say I'm, I'm on yearbook with a bunch of other people, I can share this calendar with other people. I would make this calendar completely public and I could just give the link to everybody, all the parents involved, anybody who's interested. And I would just have to keep in mind that anybody who wanted to look at that calendar could look at it. Or I could list specific people who are allowed to have access to it. Now, the really nice thing about this calendar that I love, apart from being able to move things around and share it with people and look at different things at different times, is the fact that I also have my Gmail account loaded up onto my phone. This is a screenshot of someone else's phone, but it basically gives you an idea of what it looks like. You can look at your calendar um, in a lot of different ways. You can look at it on the year, the month, the week, the day. You can even look at a list of tasks. And anything that you add on your computer version of the calendar, it will populate here and vice versa. If I am out and I get information about a meeting that I have to attend, I can enter it into the calendar on my phone. And when I sit down at my desk later, that item is on my calendar um, on my you know regular desktop computer so that makes it really really convenient I hope this information has been helpful thanks for watching and have a great day